Hey everyone, Dan Julian here, nurse practitioner for Danesthetics Medical, and today we're doing a comparison of the two titans of gentle lasers. We have IPL versus Airlays Neo. Let's get right into it. So the reason why we're doing this video is because IPL and Airlays Neo are both targeting usually pigmentation issues, right? So if a client comes in and they're saying, listen, I have sunspots or I have spider veins or rosacea or melasma or anything that's dealing with pigment and I want it gone, what do we have to offer? And I really don't want much downtime if that's possible. And I usually don't like pain as well. Well, when you're looking at all those factors, these two types of lasers come in, right? We have IPL and we have Airlays Neo. So let's look at the differences between the two. And then after that, we're gonna compare and break things down even more for you. Now to simplify things and give you a good understanding of how these two light sources work, let's break it down simply. So IPL, intense pulse light therapy, is like a light bulb. When you turn on the light, it scatters everywhere. Lights up the whole room, right? So it's non-specific broad spectrum and you know it's not going to heat up the whole room so it's pretty light source of energy which is the reason why it is a not considered a true laser and also b why it's considered a gentle laser right it's not super hot and lasers actually have a laser beam now let's look at airlays neo airlays neo is a true laser right if i turn on this light source you're just going to have a beam of energy it's not going to scatter anywhere. If I place this in a dark room, the whole room remains dark except for that one beam of energy that's focused on something. And in this case, it's focused on pigment. And it's also much hotter and it can penetrate deeper than the ranges of this light bulb. And in a nutshell, that's the difference between these two types of technologies. And this is the reason why IPL is not considered a true laser. So now that you understand the light distribution, the depth of the laser is also really important and they differ for both. So IPL is all about burning the top layer of the skin, getting quick results, but it's not going to last because it's not targeting any of the pigment that's hidden in the meat of the sandwich or the skin, right? So most of your skin is in the dermis and you have a very, very small layer on top, which is the epidermal layer, which is what you see. So when you do this treatment, one treatment usually does a great job of burning off the top layer of those pigments. And they usually flake away after about five to 10 days, which is amazing. Then you're really happy with it. And then a month later, they pop up again. Compare that to your Airlays. The Airlays is a true NDAG 1064 laser, which means that it penetrates through both the epidermal and dermal layer until it gets to the base and comes right back up. Now with Airlays, it is not burning anything really actually what it's doing is just basically targeting the pigment and it's breaking it apart so usually you're going to need multiple treatments so you are going to notice some type of improvement initially within your first treatment particularly if you have multiple very faint sunspots or some spider veins but in order to get the full results you are going to need multiple attempts to fully break it apart which is usually four or six treatments and those are usually spaced out anywhere from two to four weeks. But once you have treated those areas, they are gone for life, unless it's a chronic condition such as rosacea or melasma. Now, the other benefit of treating rosacea or melasma with Airlays is that because it's penetrating to the base of the dermis, it's going to take care of these lesions and it's going to take some time before it comes to the surface and is visible again. So even though it's a chronic condition, it is treatable and the treatment is going to give you more duration with this treatment compared to most other lasers with zero downtime. Now I just mentioned that IPL had a strength of about 800 watts, which makes it a gentle laser. Well, in contrast, the Aerolase actually has 15,000 watts, which makes it the most powerful laser on the market. Now, if that's the case, how is it considered a gentle laser? Well, the genius behind this technology is that each pulse light duration is a thousand times quicker than IPL or most lasers. So therefore you are absolutely able to treat any skin type with zero downtime and almost with zero pain. So it's pretty remarkable and pretty incredible. So even if you're dealing with a Fitzpatrick five or six, which is the darker skin tones, you can have a chance of using this laser without having the risk of looking like that. Hey everyone, look at my face. It's devastating, right? This service is not for melanated skin, not for pigmented skin. And at this point, shouldn't even be offered 
So when it comes to tolerability and downtime, IPL may be a little bit more painful, a little bit more downtime. Usually you're going to be numbed whenever you're doing an IPL treatment. And then after that, each pass, you're gonna feel like a little elastic bands just snapping your face throughout the treatment. Nothing serious, but you're definitely going to feel a little bit. By the time you're done, you're going to look red and flushed and that should last for about four to eight hours. Compare that to Aerolase. Aerolase, most of the treatment just feels like a warm blanket that's being passed on your face, but if you have areas that have heavy pigmentation, such as dark sunspots or let's say darker spider veins, then you're going to feel those a little bit more. And it'll be something similar to the feeling of the IPL, except you're not numbed. You just come in, wash your face. The procedure is very well tolerated, maybe a three out of 10 max for pain and you're good to go. Now afterwards, your downtime is pretty much zero. I would say you're looking at maybe two hours of looking pink and look like you just came out of the sun and after that, you're good. Like zero downtime, it's pretty remarkable. Now, if you're looking at these two devices from a buyer's perspective, I would definitely lead towards the Aerolase personally. And the reason why is because it has 36 treatment indications. So 30 more than what we're talking about probably in this video. And one big highlight that I really wanna push with Aerolase is that it does wonders for active acne. Whether you're taking medication or you don't wanna take medication, the way this device works is it's going to target your P. acne's bacteria, so it'll kill it, and at the same time, it's going to regulate or decrease your overactive oil gland productions. It's not going to kill them, it's just going to regulate them, and as a result, your acne goes away. It's terrific. It also helps with the reds and the dark spots that acne has caused, right? So sometimes when you have acne, it causes something called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which are these dark spots. So I'm a huge proponent of Airlays. I think Airlays does a great job. This is the reason why I chose this device instead of IPL. I think that there's definitely a place for IPL in medical aesthetics, but for me, for bringing on my first laser, I'm leaning towards Airlays and I'm really happy I made that decision. All right, everyone, I hope you really enjoyed this comparison. I hope you enjoy these videos. If you're a medical aesthetics provider looking to take your game to the next level, check out my Patreon and for everyone else, until the next time, take care of yourselves exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Take care.